Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, what's up, cheese? Make some noise for Jesus! Mic check, one, two, one, two. Make some noise for Jesus. Make some noise for Jesus. Do I have any young people who just love the Lord real quick? Stand up on your feet for me real quick. Stand up on your feet right now, right now. Stand on your feet. Come on, Matt, come closer to the stage. We're going to usher in the presence of God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God tonight. Come on, just stretch your hands to God. Just start saying something that's on your heart. Whether it's your prayer wish list, whatever you believe in God to do in your life, let's just, let's just exhort God. Let's just love on Jesus. Come on, right now. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. Come on, do we have any young people who just love God? Just cry out to God. Stretch your hands to God. There's nothing worth more. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That could ever come close. Thank you, Jesus. No thing can compare. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are living hope. It's your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We acknowledge you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We acknowledge you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Yes, yes. And I've tasted and seen It's all the sweetest of loves And when my heart becomes free Yes, Father. And all my shame is a This is your prayer. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Use this is the part where your haters don't matter. This, place and fill the earth, this is the part where your problems don't matter. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. Just stretch your hands to God as a young person. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. By your presence, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. We welcome you, God. We worship you, Lord God. We welcome you, Jesus. We didn't come here to play with you, God. Fill You're that important. Place, oh God. You're that serious. You're that important. Oh, See, there's nothing worth more. Sing it. That could ever come close. Say no thing can yes. compare. You're sure our living hope. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Release the sound to the Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's your prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. Oh, come on. Say, I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen. You saw the sweetest of loves. And when my heart becomes free, no breakup matters right now. Your ex girlfriend, your ex boyfriend don't matter right now. Your presence is your presence. Come on, Lord. You're that important to us, Jesus. Here we go. Shut your hands to God. Say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Come blood. Come blood. If you're a young person here and you have a heavenly language, just start praying in your heavenly language right now. Shut out my mind. We receive your presence. We receive your presence. We receive your presence. Oh Lord. Every teenager, just stretch it. Put your hand on your head right now. Release the Holy Spirit to frustrate your frustrations. Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Any negative thoughts? I receive the grace of God over my mind. Oil for my mind. Negative thoughts, negative energy. Just release it off your life right now. Let 
us experience the glory of your goodness. Sing that, sing. Let us become, say, more aware of your presence. Let us experience, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Jesus, we want a youth experience tonight. someone right now, over someone's shoulder, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you show up and show out. You're already here, but we confess it right now to our human mind that's in delay, that the Holy Spirit is able to run rapid in this place. In the name of Jesus, we declare open hearts, open minds. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the grace of God, the flow over young people. We come against addictions. We come against mental battles. We come against what doctors say that no one can do. Matter of fact, Father God, some young people are warring in the area of practicality. They're going through counseling sessions and doing the necessary things step by step. But I declare tonight there's going to be a leaping. There's going to be a leaping. You're going to put your supernatural over our natural steps in the name of Jesus. I declare that student athlete never needed that coach, never needed that scholarship. The favor of God is going to turn that situation tonight. And I thank you, Lord God, for miracles, answers, in cell phones. Young people will walk out of here. There'll be a text message, an open door. Mom and dad, guess what? I'll come back to the house and whatever was happening in the house doesn't faze me. God, you'll either change my situation or you'll change my perspective. But I declare as a young person, freedom. Freedom in Jesus' name. Every young person say freedom. Say it loud. Say freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God. Come on, clap for yourself. Clap for your deliverance. That's right. Put them hands together. Put them hands together. Put them hands together. Amen. 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 You may go back to your seats briefly. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the God of miracles. As I believe in you, Lord. As a teenager, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're that important to me, Because he's the God of miracles. God of miracles. Whoa. Do I have any teenagers who need a miracle tonight? Just put your hands in the air right now. You. you believe in God for a miracle. Yes, I believe We release you. miracles right now in Jesus' name over your life as a young person. Love miracles. Amen. Yeah. All right. Now that we got Jesus in the way, I can introduce myself. <laughs> I happen to be the man to come after Christ right now in this moment. My name is Chandler Bailey. I happen to be the awesome student and youth pastor of our church, Right Direction Church International. I got a couple teenagers in the house with us. Can y'all just make some noise for the epic students in here? Come on. I love them so much. Amen. And listen, young people, I'm excited to be here with you all, and I'm excited about what God is going to do in your life. I need y'all to give me three amens real loud, teenagers. Come on. One, two, three. Three amens. Amen. Amen means I agree. And what you're basically saying as a young person is you agree with God. You're specifically saying I agree with God with whatever he wants to do in my life. Now, of course, I introduce y'all to the epic students, but I'll be a crazy husband going on 10 years in December. 
if I don't shout out my beautiful wife, my lovely Idria Bailey, can you stand up and wave at the teenagers? What's up, girl? She wearing blue and everything, looking so cool. Me and her have two kids together. We have a nine and a seven year old. I always almost forget because he's about to, his birthday's in the beginning of the year, but it happens to feel like it's later in the year, January. Uh, Alina Cherish Bailey is the oldest one, and then my son's name is Chandler Righteous Bailey. We're excited about everything God's doing with him as well. But anyway, teenagers, man, can I get a young person just to scream a weird noise real loud, real quick? One. Who can make the most hyper weird corny noise? Just do it right now. One, two, three, go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I, I just want to make sure that we have some young people who are weird for Jesus. Listen, I want to highlight the scripture real quick. Let me highlight the scripture. Isaiah 53. Let's read the scripture real quick. It's what it says. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence. Teenagers, I want to ask you, if you have a Bible app, use your Bible app. If you're cool enough to bring a Bible, make some noise, use your Bible. Do I have any young people who brought a Bible? I'm just curious. Do I? It's 2018. I wonder if there's any Generation Z teenagers who brought a Bible tonight. Stand up if you brought a Bible. Stand up. I'm just curious. What up? That's what's up. Cool, cool. All right, if you got a Bible app, make some noise. All right, cool. If you're unashamedly looking at the screen, make some noise. All right, so Isaiah 53 says this. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Teens, I'm coming from Isaiah 53, 1 through 10, New Living Translation. Verse 3, we're talking about Jesus here. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for Chandler Scotland Bailey's rebellion. He was pierced for your rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, someone say all of us, like sheep have strayed away, we have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. I'm hyper and ridiculous and I'm weird and I like to shout out people I love. Make some noise for Pastor Anthony Adams and Constant Adams in the building. Make some noise for the world changers youth experience family. Make some noise for the senior pastors, Dr. Creflo and Taffy. Do Amen. I'm gonna need my basket too. I think I left it in the office. The basket has a green bag on it. I'm gonna need that. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do tonight. I thank you that these young people are going to have fun. They're going to grow in their faith. And they're going to be excited about everything you want to do this week during Great Life Conference. In Jesus' name, amen. God, thank you for keeping it real. Thank you for not being petty. Thank you for keeping 100. Thank you for holding me down. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for never lying to us. Where you at, man? <laughs> Thank you for keeping it real. Thank you for not being petty. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for never lying. Thank you for holding me down. Jesus Christ will know he crowned. Jesus Christ, you know he crowned. Cause I just keep it real. Ooh. The devil, he knows the deal. Ooh. I'm so sick with the flow. Ooh. Satan's in a hospital. Ooh. You know I stay ill. Ooh. I'm up in AATL. I gotta let you know that Jesus Ooh. Christ will never fail. Ooh. I think I'm Ooh. weird. Jesus Ooh. Christ, you hating on me, but Jesus nice. Ooh. I'm feeling so good. Shout out to all the teens that really, truly come from the hood. What? And I wish I would. I'm high on Christ, but I ain't smoking wood. Let's stop. All right, let's have fun. All right, all right. All right, listen, listen, listen. I want to talk to you. No, I ain't doing it. I ain't come here to rap. I want to talk to you all from the subject. Listen, teens. I want to talk to you from the subject, identity Christ is. Come on, say it with me. Say, identity Christ is. 
Amen. Identity Christ is. Not identity crisis. Identity Christ is. A lot of young people, we experience identity crisis. We want to be this this day. We want to rap this day. We want to go to the studio and be a professional recording artist this day. Or I want to be a biologist this day. I want to do chemistry. And a lot of times we're trying to question what our identity is. But let's look at Jesus and look at what identity Christ is in our life. Make some noise for Jesus for me real quick. So teens, Isaiah 53 clearly highlights the fact that Christ was bruised and he was hit for us. He was wounded for us so that a teenager will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. And I want to talk to you about the identity that Christ has for you. Now, before I go into an example, I want to encourage you that Jesus specializes with identity. Your guidance counselor may not, your teacher may not, your mom and dad may not. Someone from an older generation may not understand you, but Jesus specializes. Someone say specializes. Say it like a dork like Dexter's Laboratory. One, two, three. Specializes Specialize. with identity. Jesus really, truly does. He doesn't size you up and try to question who you are. He knows exactly the purpose and the core of who you are beyond your coolest clothes, beyond your swag, beyond what you think you know who you are, Christ truly knows who you are. So listen, no matter what you're dealing with in here tonight, no matter what your background you have, Jesus, check this out, specializes with brokenness, shame, and sin. Jesus specializes with brokenness, shame, and sin. Teenager, what I'm saying is he looks at those things as special ingredients he gets excited when he sees brokenness, shame, and sin. He doesn't get discouraged. We're talking about Jesus here. This type of teenager who has brokenness, shame, and sin. My Lord and Savior told me to tell you that he gets excited when he sees these things because he knows exactly what to do with it. But in order to identify with Christ, you must understand his plan with your life. And many teens can't, and some just won't. If you were here for two days so far, make some noise for every session, 10 a.m., 7 p.m. Yo, man, them speakers, were all, they, were, they all came in there and bombarded me. I thought I was going to go in there and create an atmosphere. They had the lights low. Pastor Constance was in there hanging out. I was like, oh, yeah, I could get me and my wife. We're going to get in here. I'm going to pray. Nope. They came in and they started bothering me, <laughs> all of them, because they love me like that. But listen, all these speakers, if you listen to the constant thread and what Jesus is trying to tell you this week, he's trying to let you know that his grace has the ability to change no matter what you're going through. It's like all the speakers are saying the same thing in their own unique way, coming from their own personal experience as a leader, and God's trying to grip your heart as a teenager to tell you that I really do love you, that I really can change you, and I can really deal with the core of you. Come on, say amen for that. So teenagers, God wants to take you from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Can I get that teenager to help me out real quick with the buckets? God really wants to take you from rags to riches. So when I think about Jesus and how much he loves me, I look at my experience. Thank you. We'll lay one right here, and we'll lay one over there. Amen. Ugh. Ugh. If you can see what I saw, I don't know if they have a camera they can bring up here, but it looks, it's one, this is dirty water, and that's clean water. Can I get that green bag, sir? Come on, make some noise for these young leaders helping me out. Yep, amen. We just leave this one right here. So check this out. God wants to take you from rags to riches. So when it comes to living for Jesus and living for God, God is trying to ask you, why do you keep doing the same thing if it doesn't work? Why do you keep trying to change your own way? Why are you trying to change yourself when God has something available? So here's my definition of grace before I do this example. Here's my personal example. It's not in the Bible. It's straight Chandler, Scotland, Bailey. Here we go. Grace is the ability to receive God's works without working for it. Simple. Receive God's work ethic without having your own work ethic. Grace is the ability of no ability. It's basically God's deliverance plan when you finally surrender and say, you know what, God, I can't stop watching porn. I actually like it in my flesh. When you finally say, God, you know what, when I'm stressed, I do like black and mouths. Or when you tell God the truth and say, you know what, God, when my mama's not home, I actually do want to answer the booty call. Y'all looking at me like, no, dude, we don't even care about stuff like that. We just love God. Whatever. 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 <laughs> God is saying this, will you surrender tonight? Will you just keep it 100 with him? Will you just tell God, you know what, I do have this problem. 
This is in my flesh. This is on my mind. I do have these thoughts. I do like big booty. I do like big booty. I do like big booty butts. All the guys that like big booty butts, stand up right now. Stand up. Go ahead. Stand up. Stand up. Go ahead. Just stand up. Go ahead. Stand up. Go ahead. Stand up. Go ahead. You like big booty. I like big booty butts. Check this out. When you get a rainbow dude, you be able to enjoy that big booty butt. But listen, God wants to take you from rags to riches. So check this out. I think about the rich young ruler, right? And so God wants to make you have the ability and the equipment to handle all life and what the devil throws at you. So grace is not just for you to fight off demons and devils, devils, teenagers. Grace is for your brokenness and your humanity. Grace is available to you to admit the truth. To just simply be yourself and not think you got to be like Pastor Anthony or Pastor Chandler or Pastor Lisa, whoever the next superstar person we bring up here. You don't have to be one of us to live holy. You don't have to be a speaker to say I'm serious for God. You don't have to say I'm a Christian rapper or I want to be a lead. No, God is saying in your humanity, you have the ability to admit the truth and to release heaven in your life, and I will show up with grace. So the question God's asking all of us in here tonight is do you want to keep washing yourself with this dirty water? Or do you want to allow me to use what I interpret as clean in your life? Do you want to continue to measure my love for you with your GPA score? Do you want me to, do you want to continue to measure up to me because you do have a problem having sex before marriage and you do like big booty? Or do you want to see what I have to say about it because I can wipe that thing clean and I can deal with you one-on-one, 100%, and I can give you the ingredients to your breakthrough and I will ignore all the things that's going on in your life and I have something for you. I have some riches for you that you don't qualify for. And once I clean you, maybe you can act like Christ after I get my hands on you. But if you keep trying to do it yourself, you'll act like yourself. Write that down. If you keep trying to do it yourself, you'll act like yourself. If you keep trying to do it yourself, teenager, you'll act like yourself. You aren't Jesus. The only way to be Christ-like is to be Christ-like. I can't be Christ-like being Chandler-like. The only way as a teenager you can be like Christ is to simply be like Christ. So that means you need to see what he has to say about your life. So God is saying to you right now, what do you want to do? It's up to you. There's something wrong And so the question on the table is, is there something wrong with simply being human? And with the help of the Holy Spirit, it is my prayer that you receive that the fact that God wants to take you from rags to riches. Your interpretation on what measuring up the God is, God says, I want to renew your mind in that area because I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. I don't allow you to start your relationship with me and then back up and you have to finish it all by yourself. No, I have the ability to deal with you and your brokenness from beginning and then look at you and your champion from the end and say, come on, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. And I have this clean rag and I'm trying to tell you that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm trying to tell you on the inside that I can give you beauty for the ashes that got started in that relationship that your mom and daddy told you not to talk to anyway, but you didn't want to listen because you couldn't renew your mind yet. And you shouldn't have been able to renew your mind yet because you were dealing with rags. But if you come to World Change Youth Experience on Sundays, you get the word in your life and renew your mind step by step and get the practicality of what you need as a teenager for breakthrough because faith comes from hearing the word and hearing the word and you got to hear it, hear it over and over and over again until your mind catches up with your spirit. That's why Jesus says, accept me in your heart and believe. And then salvation comes in your heart. The next step is for your mind to catch up. But teenager, listen, your mind is in delay. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes what you're pregnant with in here. In your heart, you're like, I'm really tired of just following up these guys with dreadlocks and and six-packs. Every guy who has long hair, tattoos, and six-packs, I just immediately take off my pants for. Can I just keep 100 with you? Let's not fake. Let's not fake. Let's not fake in here. We're talking about Jesus. We're not here to talk to you about protocol. We're going to keep it 100 because the Holy Ghost knows your text messages. I don't know it, but the Holy Spirit does. And I'm not going to fake and not deal with your DMs too. God loves you so much that he wants to deal with your DMs. 
And so what's going on is you're being sucked in by life over and over and over again. Come on, let's keep it real. How many of y'all have made that promise before? Okay, I'll never do it again, God. I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. Raise your hand right now. Come on, come on, come on. Raise your hand, raise your hand right now. I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. And then what happens? What happens? You do it up. So as a teenager, let's think about this. What makes us do it again? Our mind is playing catch up with our deliverance. And our mind is dysfunctional. So you can't depend on your mind. It's another place in the Bible, teenagers, that says your mind is hostile towards God, meaning your brain is programmed to hate on Jesus. That every time a youth pastor gives you a word, your brain says, you just being petty, bro. Nah, bro, nah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to be out there. I don't care. We got guns. We're going to hang out. We're going we gonna to do whatever. We're going to hang out. We're going to do whatever. And your mind keeps saying the same thing over and over again, but in your heart you want change. But God wants to take you from rags to riches. And I declare over you right now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can receive change and download the version of you that Jesus Christ sees. But it's going to take you to believe. Someone say, I believe. So God wants to take you from rags to riches. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to make a decision and really start knowing in your life what is clean and what isn't. I keep dating these dudes because I want to date these dudes, I never really ask God, what type of man does he see me having? If I keep acting like life, I'll be like life. If I keep acting like life, I'll be like life. But if by faith through the power of the Holy Spirit, I say, you know what? I declare over myself every day as a teenager, I want to be Christ-like. I want to be Christ-like. Now, my mind gets renewed, and I'm able to play catch-up, and I'm able to win. Because check this out. I, you know what? Let me just make it practical quick. I don't have my lapel mic, but let me say, show you something real quick. Let me, let's, let's, let's use another example here real quick. Um, I got some cool stuff in here, man. It was cool to me, all right? It's cool to me. It's cool to me. Someone say it was cool to him. Does anybody want to help me out? Let's find out. Hold up. All right, check this out. <laughs> Yo, man, I ate an apple, er, apple earlier today. You want to you wanna have a bite? Why? Because they, oh, okay. Oh, man, look. Hey, man, I brushed my teeth earlier today in the hotel before I came here. Anybody want to brush your teeth with my toothbrush? Uh, this is my wife, man. My wife, she, she pretty to me. I promise you she, she's clean. Anybody want to lick this, the curling iron for her hair? Why? Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Oh, I wiped my mouth when I ate, but part of it is clean. Anybody want to wipe your mouth with the same thing? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, uh, bro, hey, y'all like my hair? Someone like, bro, I don't know what you got in your hair. It might be a jerry curl. I don't. Anybody want to take my brush and smell it? Oh, okay. All right, all right wait. All right. Maybe, maybe, we, we might be able to find something in here that applies. Let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, these are clean. I promise you I didn't use them. Anyone, anybody have something in your ear? You want to use this? You want to use this right now? Ugh, you're nasty. Anybody want a Q-tip? You, you want to use your Okay, you don't? Okay. All right. So there's no, oh, okay, here we go. Anybody got to, need some toenail clippers? You want to you wanna cut your toes with the same toenail clippers as me? Anybody? Anyone want to smell it? <laughs> you're like, bro, you're nasty. Okay, so the problem that you have is I'm using the tools with my life, and I'm trying to apply them to your life. I'm using what worked for me, and I'm trying to make it work for you. And you're like, no, I don't want to use it. But I'm telling you, I used it, and it worked. And as a teenager, you're saying right now, no, bro, that might have worked for you, but it's nasty if I use it. That's what religion is. You can't use my breakthrough for you. You better find your own. Let me tell you what's beautiful about grace. What's beautiful about grace is your, you don't need the same grace I need. My grace is for me. I got expelled out of high school. You don't need that unless you've been expelled. And for me to tell you you need what I have for your deliverance, you better find what you need. Somebody might be a crip in here, a blood in here, a folk in here. Someone who might have a gang background, another one does it. God's saying this, I have gang member grace. I have weed smoking grace. I have, oh yeah, you like big booty butts grace. I have what you need for your life. But the point is this, young person, will you focus on what you need and stop looking at to your left and right and trying to figure out if someone else is going to do what you need to do for your own breakthrough. But you need to find your own. Point to a teenager next to you and say, find your own. Come on, wake your behind up right now. Tell another teenager, get your own. I dare you to nudge someone and say, find your own. Find your own. 
Find your own. Find your own. Because no one can save a blood but a blood. Let's talk. No one could maybe potentially witness to a crip but a crip. But God has grace for what you need in your life. And God is saying this, check this out. There's no label you can put on. There's nothing you can wear that can stop the love of God. And God wants to use you. Say, God wants to use me. And God wants to use you. So here's the problem with these toiletry items. I had a deodorant, I had mouthwash. I didn't say everything, all the things in here. But these are items that I use for everyday life. And biologically, our earthly bodies are unclean. And daily, we have to work to stay fresh. So what I'm trying to tell you is I'm trying to give you my work ethic, but God is saying you don't need it. This is what I use daily to stay fresh. But it works for me because it's mine. It works for me, teenager, because it's mine. What works for you? Write that down. What works for me? What works for you? Maybe some of you do need to listen to worship music a little more. That works for you. Maybe that helps detox your mind. But you won't find out what works for you until you get on God's path for your life and download through the power of the Holy Spirit what you need to stay fresh. And the Bible clearly says in Exodus that these concepts and did not work. Um, we had rams, we had bulls, and all these things. And the Bible would tell us it would challenge us in Exodus 29 and 1. It says, now this is what you shall do to them. Consecrate them. Minister as a priest to me. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish. Basically, from the interpretation of the priest, the priest teenager had to decide what's clean for you. But I'm here to tell you, you have a new covenant by way of Jesus Christ, and God is not allowing me to tell you what's clean for you. I can't forgive your sins this time. That's what I'm here to tell you. There's no you pastor that can forgive your sins. I'm here to tell you, those days are old. I know you like the guidance counselor. I know we counsel you. I know we talk to you. But until you as a young person get involved, someone say get involved. Until you actually lift your hands and say, God, I need you. Until you say, you know what, God, I'm, I am in this lifestyle, but maybe I can still feel the presence of God. And maybe I can worship God. And let's just stay there. And I don't know what to do next. I don't know my next step, but I know this step. I do know I'm questioning my lifestyle. I don't know what I want to do, but I feel like everything makes sense when I'm in the presence of God. And what God is saying to you as a teenager right now, everyone stand up real quick for me. What God is saying to you, is that it will you do what works for you through the power of the Holy Spirit? Answers come. Listen, answers come. Come on, man who is worshiping, can you come up here and flow with me real quick? Answers come, and God wants to take you from rags to riches. And guess what? Whatever you use that you thought could clean you, God said, no, I got, I got, I got the real deal for you. I got some blood. Someone say blood. I got some blood for you, and it's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. And by the Spirit, Jesus wants to make you fresh and clean because John 8 and 36 says this, who the Son sets free, not who Pastor Chandler sets free, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise God for y'all just coming. See, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's coming. It's to come. Come. All who want them, come. All who want them, come. If you want some of that, Jesus, just come. Who the Son sets free is free. Don't even come if you don't want freedom. God, I need breakthrough. God, I need breakthrough. There's things in my body. There's thoughts in my mind. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I need the fire of God to burn this thing up because I'm liable when I leave here to get high. I want someone, I want a teenager like that to come who can keep it 100 and say, nah, man, I'm, I'm going to smoke tonight. So if God don't show up, I'm going to get high later because I need to feel good. My life is that crazy that this thing gives me peace. I need you at the altar. Because the real Jesus ain't nothing, ain't nothing that can stop the love of God. Not no condom, not no sex life. Nothing can stop Jesus because Jesus deals with the core issue. He deals with the seed. He knows the story that the psychologist doesn't know. He knows the story that that broken human prophetic anointing doesn't know. He knows the story and God is saying, I want to get serious with your life. Just stretch your hands towards God right now. Father, we release the power of God over these young people right now. 
youth counselors right now, stretch your hands towards them. You might have came with your youth group. If you have a heavenly language and you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and you have the evidence of speaking in tongues, just start speaking. Stretch your hands towards God. We release the Holy Spirit to do what only you can do because the tools we use in life to clip the things away and brush the things down and brush off the cavities in our life, it doesn't work when it comes to Christ. It doesn't work. Your basket of change that you brought here with you at World Change Youth Experience don't work. You came to this Grace Life Conference with your own basket of deliverance and God says, I don't want it. I don't want it. You came with your own basket of deliverance and God says, I don't want it. You came with your own rags and God's saying tonight, I don't want it. Don't you wipe yourself with what you wiped yourself to clean yourself up to get here. I don't want it. I have something else for you. Quickly, quickly, listen. Let me tell you what's special about these books. Someone say, who the, everybody says right now, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Say with authority, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Now check this out. Pastor Constance and Pastor Anthony Adams really blessed me. They gave my wife and I this book in our hotel room. One's by Do uh, Do uh, Dr. Taffy Dollar, The Great Spiritual Submission, and Unmasked the Spirit of Mammon by Dr. Creflo Dollar. But let me tell you what makes this book special. It's not just a book. Dr. Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar signed it. But let me, let me give you the revelation behind it. It was sealed. So even though this book, there's more copies, mine was sealed with their signature. What am I saying? Listen, what I'm saying, God wants to seal something in your life. It wants to give you your own version of the Bible in your heart. He wants to make you a living epistle. So as you walk with your blue flag, or your red flag, or your black flag, or your weed smoking self, you still feel the power of God. And you start taking showers and you put worship music on and you planned on smoking after, but you got caught up in worship and you, and you say, you know what, I'm, I don't wanna smoke today. And you know through your own living epistleness, for lack of better words, that that had to been God. Because you know you are committed to smoking every Wednesday morning before school if you have a delayed opening, but for some reason you don't want to smoke, and now you don't even need no scripture. You got your own scripture in your heart. You know that was God. See, that's what happens with great. As you walk, and so now, now, now you're like, okay, well, I still love my boys, and I'm still, I'm still in this gang, and I still rep my hood, but I want my boys to get educated, and, I, and I, I don't, I'm tired of us losing lives, and, and something happens in your life, and you're like, you know what? I don't want to be about that life like them, but you're still with them, and they're like, you're, you, and now you have access to them. And you say, hey, bro, look, man, let's just, hey, let's go to church tonight. Let's, let's pray. Can I pray with you, man? Would you, oh, man, you got a girl praying? Okay, well, let me pray. Let me declare you'll be the best father ever. And now you become a living epistle. Someone say living epistle. Stretch your hands towards God. Repent and say, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, seal what you want to seal in my heart. Seal what you want to seal in my heart. Father God, release to me what's mine in you. Give me what's for me and only me. Show me your grace, Shut up. give me this favor. Give me, check this out, my Jesus. Come on, say my Jesus. My give Jesus. me the give blood. Me. Show me. Show me. For all that you can show me. Oh. Listen, I don't know what the protocol is, but can we just worship God right now? Come on. Yeah. Oh. Shut your hands on God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Show me, show me, Come on, Jesus, your hands show me, yeah. 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 If you're in a game, just make your way to the altar right now. Make your way to the altar. Or lift your hand and wave it. God wants to send love. 
Says love to your click, to your squad. Wave your hand. I'm, my boys, come on, pray for your boys right now. Wave your hand. If a youth council can find them right now, pray. Pray for them. Cover them in the blood. Come on, do it anyway. Wave your hand if that's you. Come on, right here. Look, I need a youth council over here. Pray with them. Right now. And my faith if that's you, if we give you peace, put your hands in the air. A youth council is going to find you and release the power of God for you right now. Shut up. Spirit, in the name of Jesus, where my trust is without whatever you say, whatever you say, let me whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. your mind that you don't need your mind for deliverance. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's not just a heavenly language. It also sounds crazy to what's crazy in your head. So that you don't listen to your mind when you want weed. You just go shata mandorobo shatara mama mandorobo ko rababa shatara mama mandorobo 
Ghost. And now the Holy Ghost starts breaking. Breaking. In the name of Jesus right now. Those who want the Holy Spirit, wave them hands for me. Stretch them up. Stretch them up. Repeat me five. Say, God, I receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues to break every chain break and destroy every, every yoke customized and formed and kiss my life in Jesus' name. Now it's power Receiving it right now. Right now. Wave your hands. Keep your hands in hand. No one touch you. Breaking your chains. Breaking your chains. He's breaking your chains. Yeah. He's breaking your chains. Breaking your chains. Breaking your chains. He's breaking. He's breaking your chains. Breaking your chains. Breaking your chains. Right now, receive it. Breaking your chains, breaking your chains, breaking your chains. By faith he is breaking your chains, breaking your chains, breaking your chains. You're no longer bound, breaking your chains. The Bible says when two or three gather, he's right there with us. Is there any young person who did not get touched by a youth leader, a youth pastor, a youth counselor, anybody? For the Holy Spirit. Wave your hands like this if you need the Holy Ghost. Raise it. The Holy Spirit. Right here, right here. Miss the mic, right here. Right here. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Falling. They're falling right now. Inside. Pastor, is it still here? Chains falling. Every obstacle is now broken. I hear the chains falling. It's the sound of freedom. The sound of freedom. I hear the chains falling. Release that right now. Say, I hear, I hear the chains falling. Don't try to understand tongues with your natural mind. Don't try to understand tongues with your with your natural mind. It'll it'll dumb it down. But it's proof that something you wasn't taught on this earth. Is taking place because you're not faking it. But you, it's evidence of the baptism. Of the, it's evidence. It's proof of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I see tongues falling down on this crowd. Tongues, tongues, tongues of fire. Anybody in this room that's not filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the proof and the evidence of speaking in tongues, just begin to lift your hands right now. Just begin to lift your hands right now. He's going to meet you right where you are. Reclaim, <laughs> 